Welcome to MEB. This is episode 12, Degree of Freedom Analysis. Imagine the frustration of having spent hours on a jigsaw puzzle only to realize you are missing a piece at the very end. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take inventory of your proverbial puzzle pieces in MEB problems, and hopefully you'll never have your solution thwarted at the end by a lack of information. At its core, a degree of freedom is a simple audit that compares the number of unknowns to the number of equations that relate those unknowns. Subtracting the equations from the unknowns yields the degrees of freedom. If degrees of freedom equals zero, the number of equations equals the number of unknowns. This means that the system is appropriately specified. A unique solution exists and you can theoretically solve the problem. However, if degrees of freedom is positive, the unknowns outnumber the equations, and the system is said to be underspecified. As we saw in an earlier episode, no solution exists for these types of problems unless you can obtain some more information in the form of givens or other equations. Underspecified problems have no unique solution, so I would generally not recommend attempting to solve them. If degrees of freedom is negative, there are more equations than unknowns, and the system is said to be overspecified. Although this doesn't seem like a bad thing to have more information than necessary, it means that some of the information isn't required to arrive at an answer. If all the equations agree, I like to call this redundant information. This is like asking two different people for directions and having both of them tell you the same thing. It's nice to get confirmation, I guess, but not exactly necessary. There's a much more confusing possibility for overspecified systems. The equations can actually disagree and contradict one another. This is kind of like asking two people for directions again, but this time they each tell you a different thing. In this case, there's no way to know which one to trust, so the problem becomes unsolvable. Perhaps a quick example to clear this up. Let's say we have a mixing operation with two streams going in and one stream going out. One feed stream flows at 200 moles per minute and contains 20 mole percent A and 80 percent B. The other feed stream flows at 100 moles per minute and contains 50 mol percent A and 50 mol percent B. The outlet stream contains 35 mol percent A. If I draw and label my block flow diagram, I could tell you right now that this short problem is overspecified, and by the end of the video I hope that you will be able to perform the degree of freedom analysis and agree with me. However, there's no way to know whether an overspecified problem is redundant or contradictory without trying to solve it. Here, I can apply an overall material balance to find the overall molar flow rate of the excess stream should be 300 moles per minute. However, I could attempt to solve for the same variable by performing a material balance on component A. If I do it this way, I get 257 moles per minute. Obviously, this is not the same result, and I can therefore conclude that this problem is contradictory and therefore unsolvable. For what it's worth, if the problem statement had said that the outlet stream is 30 mole percent A instead of 35 percent, the problem would have been redundantly overspecified and both equations would have led me to the same answer. Mechanics of performing the degree of freedom analysis. The first step is to count the unknowns. To do this, start with a fully labeled block flow diagram, recalling that you must be able to express the amount of any species in any stream, either with given information or with unknown variables. Back to my example from before, I have two unknowns, which are N3 and Y3B. Next, count the number of equations. These can come from various sources, and we've already covered three of them. Material balances, physical constraints, and process specifications. In the example, there are two material balances, because there are two components, and a physical constraint. Performing the degree of freedom yields 2 minus 2 minus 1, for a net negative 1 degrees of freedom. If you've been shouting at your computer screen for the past couple of minutes that Y3B isn't really an unknown, you're absolutely right. However, this doesn't change the conclusion of the degree of freedom. It's fairly easy to see that Y3B is 65%, but realize that I am solving the physical constraint mentally. If I label it like this, the number of unknowns decreases from 2 to 1, but I cannot count the physical constraint equation either, so my degree of freedom becomes 1 unknown minus 2 material balances for the same negative 1 degrees of freedom. There are a few other types of equations that we can add to the degree of freedom, but these will be covered later when we get to reactions, multi-phase systems, and energy balances. 
For now though, let's add physical properties to the list of potential equations. An example of such a physical property relationship would be if the volumetric flow rate of a stream were given. Knowing the density of that stream would allow us to calculate the mass flow rate with the equation mass flow rate equals density times volumetric flow rate. Let's see another full example. Suppose we have another mixing process, again with two streams in and one stream out. One feed stream contains 35 mole percent water and the rest acetone and chloroform. The other feed stream contains water, acetone, and 10% dichloromethane. The molar flow rates of the feed streams are equal. The exit stream has twice as much by moles acetone as chloroform and three times as much water by moles as acetone. Perform a degree of freedom analysis and solve for the composition of the exit stream. Start, as always, with the fully labeled process flow diagram. Not many values are given, so we have plenty of unknowns. 11 to be exact. How many equations are there? There are four species, so four independent material balances. Each of the three streams has a physical constraint that I could write, and there are three process specifications as well. 4 plus 3 plus 3 equals 10. 11 unknowns minus 10 equations gives us one degree of freedom, meaning that the problem doesn't appear solvable. However, there is actually something else that I can and must do in order to solve this problem. But I haven't taught you what that is yet, and this is a topic for next time on Material and Energy Balances. Episode 12, Learning Objectives. Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Explain the meaning and significance of underspecification or overspecification. And 2. Apply a degree of freedom analysis to a single unit, steady state, continuous, non-reactive, material balance problem. That will conclude this episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.